This is Top Floor TV. I am with Lou Milioy, the industry's troubleshooter. We're going to do something a little bit different. I should say <laughs> Lou is the president of LGM and Associates Technical Flooring Services, and Happy New Year. Same to you, Dave. Happy New Year. And Happy New Year to our uh, viewers and listeners. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, okay, we're done. You just took the funny hat off, too, so that was, uh, you know. Well, that, you know. I tell you, now, and we, we cleaned up the confetti and yeah, yes, that's right. Put the champagne yeah. away, so we're ready to took, took the have it off your head. Yep. Um, now we usually talk about individual problems that Lou goes out, and I thought we'd do something a little bit different in that it's the beginning of the year, and I thought it'd be a good idea to look at some of the problems that you look at day in and day out, and sort of subdivide them into various categories. And I don't know that these are these are categories the way you subdivide them in your mind, <laughs> but I've got manufacturing defects, installation deficiencies, and others. Mm -hmm. Problems, and I suspect that most problems are probably either manufacturing or installer problem. Is that the way you, how, how do you subdivide most them? Of them? Most of them are actually others. Are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Continue, go ahead and ask, finish asking well, the question. Well, I just wanted we, to I can know how that. you did that and get a feel for the number in each category. Okay. Um, and that's a good question. Somebody calls here, they've got a problem. Um, very often they don't even know how to express the problem that they've got. Unless it's a commercial flooring contractor, which we do a lot of work for. And they can give you a, a much better definition of exactly what's occurred. Mm -hmm. And they're more knowledgeable about the problems because they may work with a particular product, not have, having ever had experienced the problem like the one they've got. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, we've been using this product and all of a sudden we got a problem with it. That can relate to a manufacturing issue. Because in the flooring industry, we have ups and downs. You're, you're, and we've always had ups and downs with qualities of product. You know, you're making something, you're competing, you're trying to get your prices low, you're doing whatever you've got to do. And there's a point at which you can cross a line. And that little bitty change that you made now has a reaction out in the field that causes the product to do something that it typically didn't do, whether it's a carpet tile that's curling, whether it's edges that are fraying, whether it's yarns popping out, whether it's whatever. And generally when you research that, and we're in a position, because we're here in Dalton and we know so much of what's going on, you know, so-and-so was finishing their product here and now they're finishing it here and it's over here and you know that this guy over here, you know, what equipment he's got and mm -hmm. he's doing whatever he's doing. Uh, and he may be, and they, and they may have gone there because it was less expensive, um, and you know, consequently, it creates a a domino effect where you've got something that's occurring out there that may not have yeah. occurred before. So when we look at these, first you have to ask who's ever calling, tell me what you're experiencing, and. We don't go out and look at everything. Now, the majority of the big commercial claims, certainly we go out and look at, but a lot of times we've got dealers calling in here who are re residential dealers, and, and I've always done work for them. I've had that relationship since I've started in retail in the industry. And because I wrote the column in Floor Curving News and, and did all that, um, this show that we've done for 25 years, I have a reputation where people will say, geez, I heard you say this, or my newsletter, uh, something that you wrote somewhere that appears someplace else, and I do that for different, you know, uh, magazines, and someone will call and say, geez, we're doing something on this, and, you know, can you write something for it? Not in the in flooring industry at all. Having said that, People will call and say, and even consumers now, we're getting more calls from consumers. We've got this problem, and here's what it is, and, you know, on and on they go. Well, let me ask you some questions about it. And you start asking them questions, what the product is, where they got it, uh, do you have any photographs that you can send me, can you send me samples? And then you, you do that, and then you determine whether or not you can, there's anything you can do to help them, which typically there is. Um, and or we'll just pass them off to, uh, you know, we're not, we are not flooring, we're not carpet inspectors or flooring inspectors. We're way beyond that. We're, 
um, we're kind of like the forensic pathologists of the industry. So I may pass them on to an associate and say, hey, look, here's a consumer that's got a problem with a wood floor. Uh, do you have somebody in this particular area? It's a residential thing, and I'll do that. And we do that a lot, whether it's ceramic or wood or whatever. Big commercial stuff, that's our ballywick. And we'll do the same thing as far as asking questions. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we'll have talk to a consumer and say, look, here's what the, what the situation is. Um, if you'd like, you can send us material, and based on everything that we've discussed and the pictures that you've shown me and everything, we can test it for you to see whether or not there's a problem with it. And they may send it in, and it could be a retailer doing the same thing, and we do that a lot. Uh, send the material in, you test the material, you determine that there's in fact a problem with it, whose material is it, and as I said, we, I've got contacts, we've got contacts everywhere, all over the world, and you know, with several phone calls or emails, you can find out who's doing what and where it's coming from. And even in China, when it comes to wood or laminate, um, we've got contacts there that we can say, you know, we've got 400 people making this stuff and six of us are really good at it and the rest of them are okay and some of them are really bad. Um, so uh, you do that and you find out that, you know, you can evaluate and test the material to determine what's wrong. We do a lot of stuff for manufacturers as well. Mm -hmm. Manufacturer will come and say, you know, could you evaluate this product for me? Uh, we want a totally and objectively unbiased opinion as to what we have here. Um, we want to market this and say this. Can we really say that because is there that much yeah, of a difference yeah. between the product? And we've done, we've done that. And mm -hmm. we do more of that too. And we're, and to answer your question, I don't know whether I think I may have gone around the barn to get to a point and I may not have even gotten to the point that you wanted me to get to. Um, most of what we see, you're going to have categories of manufacturing defects that, as I said, they'll go up and down. And they could be carpet tile, they could be broad loom, they could be um, luxury vinyl tile and but luxury vinyl a, plank. that's a smaller percentage of the overall problems where there's actually a problem, a defect with the product itself? Yeah, actually it is. Most of the problems that we see are just people being stupid. You know, it's like you go out and look at something and say, all right, so... you so said people now. What's the category? Is that the, could be, the uh, building owner or could the be customer? The, could be the building owner, the could be the GC, could be, you know, you're sitting in, in a conference room when you go out and you look at... You're looking at a problem, and you got the ins installation contractor there, and you got the general contractor there, and you got the building owner, and you got all of these people... And, excuse me, and these are generally not stupid people, per se. They were stupid in what they did. But it's like, okay, so you, you installed this material, and you wanted this particular look, and you went out someplace and looked at it and felt that it was going to work because we did, they did a little research. And when it finally was installed, it's failing. And but it's failing more on one floor than it is on the other, and then you know. So you and I'm and I'm thinking of an example. <clears throat> you did something that the flooring contractor told you not to do because it was going to be less expensive for you, whether it was an abatement or whatever. And now everything's failing, and you want to know what to do. Well, you know, did you have a spec? Well, we use the manufacturer's information. Okay. Let's look at the manufacturer's information. Manufacturer's information says you can't do this. So you're telling me that you did this because you're based on a manufacturer's information who tells you you can't do it, but you did it anyway. Well, they did it except for that line. <laughs> yeah. I says, if I can find this, why couldn't the people that I'm talking to find it? Because it's not difficult, uh, and they are saying that well, they, they used it. Well, they probably mean who actually reads the spec. Well, and that's the thing. And, and the other thing is, so so... You're, you're going out and you're looking at something. I just finished writing um, this morning, actually, just finished writing my latest issue of the, my, the Commercial Flooring Report, my newsletter. And essentially, it, it's every problem that you go out and look at could have been prevented. There's not one I've looked at commercially in all the years I've been doing this that it couldn't have been prevented. Had somebody done what they were supposed to have done, used what they were supposed to have used, and uh, qualified the product that they were using. Yeah. But in the case that I'm describing, um, it's I just... I suppose that includes the subfloor. Oh, everything. It, inclu that yeah, it includes well, everything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the whole package. Um, I, people, 
it's so frustrating that and I shouldn't say that because that's our business. I mean, yeah. I built a career on it, uh, on people making stupid mistakes, and it doesn't make any difference who they are. Uh, and they could be manufacturers, they could be installation people, they could be uh, adhesive people that's saying, you know, uh, we had a failure that a builder signed in, and he said, we don't have, ever have a problem, we use this material, and now we've got this, and that's that and the other thing, and, you know, it's making hollow sounds on a brand new house, we can't figure out what's wrong, and, you know, we got very involved in that, and he sent in adhesive, we... We tested the adhesive, we analyzed the adhesive, and sure enough, the adhesive was bad. And, um, you know, we do uh, uh, an analysis, and it spikes because it's got way too much of something in it that it shouldn't have in it, and that's what caused the failure. But it's typically things like that. So manufacturing defects, you can go back and say, here's what went wrong and why, and here's how you can resolve this. And you can typically go back to the manufacturer if you can prove to them that, and typically they'll know that they, they have a problem, and they'll take care of it. Because this isn't the only case. That, right. They yeah. may tell you that that's not that's the only case, but, you know, we're getting the calls, and so are they. So, um, and it's not that, like they're doing it intentionally. Sometimes things happen afterwards. We've had cases... You want to ask more questions. Would you rather ask more questions or you want me to keep going and explaining well, this to you? Let me, let me ask you another question, and then I'm sure we'll work our way back into this. Because I'll talk all day if yeah. you Well, <laughs> um, a number of installers left the industry mm -hmm. and didn't come back and will not come back. Mm -hmm. So that means there are fewer people out there to install, and very likely the ones that are out there, some of them are new, some of them don't have the background that the other ones had. <laughs> Are you seeing that show up in jobs that you're called out on? Not so much. Um, you're absolutely correct. And one of the problems has been the retailer himself. The retailer created the problem. It wasn't the fact that there was the, it wasn't the fact that business went down the tubes. It wasn't the fact that um, the work wasn't there for guys who wanted to do it. The retailer, you know, it's like the Pogo cartoon. We have met the enemy, and he is us. The retailer was beating the daylights out of these guys for a cheaper price, do it less, do this. You know, you cannot live like that. He can't expect that labor to install the product, and the product is worth nothing until it's installed. You can't continue to beat these guys up and expect them to be enthusiastic about working for you. And that's been pretty much universal. Absolutely. And it's been since I've been in the industry. So it's funny that I talked to this weekend here in Chattanooga, there was a, a custom car show that I went to, and I happened to see a dealer from Alabama, and I've known this guy for years, and he came over and he was, has a car that he was exhibiting there, and we were talking about this. And I said to him, how are you finding, I says, you know, there's a big problem in the industry, everybody's complaining about installers. He says, well, we don't have, really have a problem getting installers one of the problems that we have is everybody who's in selling the stuff is selling it for next to nothing labor well and he says i know you're going to have problems when you install like that because you got guys that don't know what they're doing or aren't haven't been introduced to the right ways to do things they're out there whether they're groups that are coming in from you know hispanic guys or whatever and they're look i'm of italian heritage when the Italians came over, they were good at stone, masons. I mean, I can't tell you how many people were in a construction business. Um, and you learn those trades. Or you've got Polish guys that I remember when I first got in the industry, there was a couple of Polish guys. You put them on a ceramic job, whatever they told you it cost, that's what you paid because they were the best that there were. These are tradesmen. You get these Hispanic guys coming, and they're doing these jobs with stone or whatever. They're great. They're fantastic. But if you're beating them up for a price, and then they start to look... Because they're not going to be stupid forever. And they start saying, you know what? I can make more money doing this. I can make more money doing it for myself. Um, that's what the problem is. We created the problem. We created the exodus of people in the industry who have left to go do something else. And installing floor covering is hard work, especially carpet, broadloom carpet. When you got to wrestle these rolls around. That ain't easy. That's not easy work. I can't tell you how many of the jobs I've been on around the country where we brought crews in on situations we were working in, and I'm saying to myself, Manhattan, for example, these guys are making $165 an hour. They're union installers. They're phenomenal. But they're killing themselves. 
They're making great money. But, you know, part of that is to go back in to train them because they're constantly trained. And that's, you know, part of that is the install program, which you finance that. And it, it's a self career that they have. They get retirement benefits and everything else. And it's still bulwark. It's hard work. Um, and they work as teams. So they're good at what they do, but they're still killing themselves.